Hi, I'm Todd with the Land of Math. In this video, we're going to look at one of my favorite projects we've done in the last few years. It's called the Serial Box Project. Now, we've done this one for well over a decade, and it's always one of the favorites of students and, of course, myself. Um, I feel like there's a lot of stuff you can do with it, and there's a lot of flexibility, which makes it nice. In this video, I'm going to go through the different steps that we use to have the students create their own serial box project. So everything from the idea, the reverse engineering, all the way up to the actual creation of the serial box. And so there'll be some little tips along the way, uh, tricks that maybe we found make things a little easier. So you're going to tell too that I'm not the most um, artistic kind of person, but I think it's decent enough that you can, uh, you can get the idea. If you find that you need some extra help or just want like a little guidance, I do have a handy guide that you can find both on Amazon and on Teachers Pay Teachers, so that's available if you need it. So, without any further ado, let's get started with the video. The first thing you want to do with your students is find out what they're interested in. So, for me, for example, I like sports, Nike, tacos, and of course, 70s love songs. But that's not what I'm going to focus on today. What I'm going to try to do is make a cereal box that's the Dixon Ticonderoga pencil. Now, to be honest, my favorite is actually the Blackwing 602. It's kind of like the Ferrari for pencils. But the Ticonderoga is my day-to-day -day workhorse, and it's my favorite for students to use as well. Now, as we're getting ready to make this, there's going to be certain challenges we're going to have to look at. So first of all, the main body of our pencil is a, a hexagonal prism. But on the end of it, the metal part and the eraser are both cylinders. Now that creates a little bit of a problem because where the points, where the hexagonal prism and the cylinders meet, there are like gaps that are created. On the end, it looks kind of easy because it's a cone, but the problem is, is where the cone would match with the hexagonal prism, we have kind of like this unusual connection. So what we want to do is try to reverse engineer this, figure out a way kind of around this a little bit. So the first and kind of the easiest thing to do is we're just going to make the eraser, the cylinder, and the actual body, we're just going to make the whole thing one big hexagonal prism. And so that'll kind of take away that problem with the cylinder on the end. Now, as far as the tip of the pencil goes, what we're going to do, instead of trying to use a cone, which would not match up with our hexagonal prism, we're going to use a hexagonal pyramid. So the base of the pyramid would match up perfectly with our hexagonal prism. And so you can see they all would connect here nice and evenly. Now, once we get that, so we've kind of solved our problems here, we need to come up with some dimensions. And so what we're going to try to do is the body of it is going to be 25 centimeters. And, and since we're using a regular hexagon, I'm going to make each side equal to six centimeters. Now what that means is I'm going to need six rectangles that are six by 25. The triangles that make up the hexagonal pyramid are going to have a base of six. And originally I was trying to do a height of six. But the problem is when I made it later, it didn't look good, so we actually were gonna go with 12. All right, our next step is to build a prototype. Now this is like a practice version of what we're ultimately gonna do. Now on this one, I'm, I'm measuring off every six centimeters, and I'm doing it on both sides of the paper. And I'm gonna connect all these lines together, all these points together, and it's gonna give me six rectangles, which will represent the size of our hexagonal prism. And then I'm gonna measure off 25 centimeters off the side. That's going to be like the height or the length of our pencil. Mark off those points. And then what we'll do is we'll just cut it out. And so this is going to give me the hexagonal prism. You're going to notice that I'll fold on the edges or fold on the lines. Create that nice edge. And that's like the side of our hexagonal prism. Now, I'm going to draw three more lines here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make little marks halfway between them. I'm going to do it top and bottom. I'm going to connect those. Now, in this case, I did with a red pencil. Now, earlier I was going to make my sides, um, si the height of the triangle, six centimeters. But you can see on this one, it seemed pretty short. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it 12 centimeters. So I'm making a little dot, 12 centimeters. And I'm going to connect from the dot to the corners. And I'm going to do that every single time. Right here, I create three triangles. And I do it on the other side as well. So these are the six triangles that go in the end of these rectangles. Now in this particular one, once we've cut out the triangles, what I decided to do is just tape all the triangles together. And so once we tape them all together, 
it's going to kind of form our little kind of looks like a cone or something there and we can just tape that right there and again you can see this is kind of sloppy because that's kind of what we're looking for all right next we need to make the end of the pencil like the eraser which is a hexagon so i draw a six centimeter line and I get my angle ruler and open up to 120 degrees because all the angles of a hexagon would be 120 if it's a regular hexagon. I mark off six centimeters. I re re uh, rotate it and I keep doing the same thing. I go all the way around. I have my hexagon. Cut it out. And I just tape it to the end. So I have my prototype here looking pretty decent. It's a little rough, but that's okay. So now we can go to the final project. Just like before, I measure off or mark off every six centimeters. But this one's a little different. I'm using a cardstock paper that's longer. So what I'm going to do here is I only have room for four um, rectangles or four sides. But it's longer, so I'm going to add the triangle to it, like to the end of it. Which will be nice, because that way I don't have to tape triangles to the rectangles. So the first thing I do is I mark off 25 centimeters. And so for these four sides right here, that would be the height of the rect or the length of the rectangle. Now I'm going to measure another 12. That would be the tip of the triangle. So mark that off. And so on each one of these little rectangles here, I'm going to put a dot right in the middle. And so what I can do with that, that would be like the point of this pencil. So I'm going to take that dot and I'm going to just draw a line to the corner. And so I'm going to do this every single time. So the big advantage, like I said earlier, is I don't have to cut out all these triangles and then turn around and tape them. The less taping, the better. Now I just cut it out. Again, it's cardstock, so it's a little thicker, but that's going to be an advantage when we go to make this uh, project. So we just cut all the pieces, and boom, we got ourselves four of our, our six sides. So I have to do it two more times, cut it out. And now I can put them together, and you can see how I'm going to have a total of the six sides. Now, what I want to do in a little bit here is we're going to tape it, but first of all, we're going to use the X-Acto knife. Now, one reason why I really like using like poster board or thicker board is if I take the X-Acto knife and lightly cut the paper, I don't cut all the way through, but wherever there's a crease or an edge, I can fold it. It gives me this really sharp look to it. And everything fits together nicely. One of the biggest problems students have is trying to put stuff together so it fits nice. I do the same thing on the other two. All the creases are really nice and sharp. I don't have stuff that's all rounded. And you can see how this is going to really come together nice when I do it. I go ahead and I tape these together. Now, I'm going to tape on the inside so you don't see the tape. The whole idea, minimize tape. So, I put the two pieces together. And what I'm going to do now is actually just color and design it. So on the end of the pencil, we know it's going to be red or like a pink for the eraser. And then the, the metal part that went around was kind of like this combination of yellow and green. So I went ahead and I kind of put that down. I did the lines. The nice thing about having everything taped together is you can make sure everything fits nice together. You don't have like things that are offset. So here I kind of roughly try to make the, the Ticonderoga look something like their logo color in the yellow, and you can see everything matches up nicely. To get the end of the pencil, again, I just line up my um, ruler. Now, ideally, I should have probably went back with a black marker to make it a little darker, but that's okay. Now, I end up drawing the wood. I was trying to do a tan. It doesn't really show up well in the video. And you can see here I'm doing the end of the eraser. Again, when I tape that hexagon on, I'm taping on the inside. So right now of this whole object, none of the tape would be visible because everything so far has been on the inside. And again, I would try to do this as long as I could. So once you get about to this point right here, you're going to have to start to put some of the tape on the outside. It's just going to get a little bit harder. And so you're just matching up all the edges. Now, this is one where I was off a little bit and had to redo it. Just reline it. But you can see the parts are all starting to come together. And so we have here our, our zero box project, which is looking pretty decent. Once our students have completed this project, what we usually do is extend this activity a little bit. We usually include uh, finding volume, surface area, um, making a scale drawing, and also drawing the net of their cereal box as part of the activities. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, if it was, give it a like 
And we'd love for you to subscribe to our uh, channel. Thank you very much.